Good morning, y'all. Welcome to the Cedar Ridge Chronicles. My name is Daniel. Appreciate you coming to my channel if you haven't already. I'd really appreciate it if you'd hit that subscribe button. Uh, I got some decent content on here. It ain't great, but hey, you might be entertained with something. Today is going to be a very, very interesting day down in the shop. Uh, if y'all happen to watch this video, y'all going to get a kick out of this. It's something I've never attempted before. I've got this 9800 McKenzie form that is one of the most difficult to get a cape and a head to fit on correctly. Uh, you know, just to get it maneuvered into place the way that you want it. But here is the cape that we have to work with. Looks like a cape, right? Normal? Nope. Tell y'all what this is. A friend of mine killed this buck last year, and it's not a bad buck by any means. Really pretty deer. And uh, had decided he wasn't going to have it mounted. He was just going to do a skull mount. Changed his mind about three or four months ago. Had the, the skull still in the freezer. Wanted to know if there was any way that I could mount his deer with a different cape, but still use the same skin off of the head because it's got a lot of red in it. Real dark colored face. Just a, it was just a beautiful deer. Also had a double throat patch, which hate losing that, that hide off that double throat patch. But what I'm going to do, we've got another cape that is relatively the same size as his deer. It's also very close to the same color. It's got a lot of red in it too. So we've saved this cape. We're going to try to put this back together. Uh, I'm going to just going to have to cut this out to where it, it sort of matches and we're going to stitch this back together and see if we can get it to match up close enough to where we can mount it. And what I'm going to have to do is, is go back maybe with my airbrush and try to put in that that double throat patch. You can see on this one where the throat patch actually ended and then the next one began. And this one is, it just had a little short throat patch. It doesn't have anything on it. So we're gonna have to, to add that in there. But uh, this is gonna be interesting. I've, I've thinned out the edges of these things extremely thin. And I'm gonna show y'all how I'm gonna do this. Whether it worked out or not, I don't know, but we're gonna video it and we're gonna see what happens. We got old Frankenstein put together. Got him stitched on around the throat right there. On around to the other side. So we should be ready to go. I'll show y'all what I did. Y'all can see how I did all this really unevenly. What that does is it's kind of like when you're laying carpet, you're supposed to cut an uneven line. And when you lay all those carpet fibers together, or in this case, the fur, it'll help hide that seam so it's not just a straight line. You can see the seam a little bit right in here where the hair is not quite as long, but we're also gonna be coloring that double throat patch. You can see right here where the other one was cut off and that throat patch just stops. We're gonna continue that on down so that will hide some of that. But for the most part, I mean, that looks pretty good. So hopefully this will fit on this form pretty nicely because that's gonna be the, it's gonna be the tough part. Moment of truth. Let's we'll see how she fits.
feels all right. I think we might be okay. We know the head's going to fit. I just need this seam to work out right here. It ain't looking bad. I think that that might work. All this tacks it into place right here. Give us enough down here. And we'll go back up top, pull it back toward the head and start stitching. Y'all can see where the hair on the back of this ear is trying to slip just a little bit. This head had been put in the freezer back in January and it was not planned on being shoulder mounted. Now it's mid July and it, it wasn't even wrapped in a, a plastic bag. So got a lot of freezer burn. I had a lot of repair I had to do to the ears. Real bad freezer burn around the, the burrs of the antlers and on the top of the head. And uh, it just makes it hard for that Kate to accept that tan and that pickle when it's that bad freezer burnt, but uh, we're going to be able to salvage about 99% of it, I believe. Those little spots like that, once this dries up, we can flock them a little bit, give them a little bit of peach fuzz back. He'll look just fine. This is going to be a little tricky right here, working around these stitches, trying to keep everything sort of in line. So I can see the stitches, stitches along that neckline have held together really good. 
which is good. Hopefully I got them tight enough. You gotta be careful not to over tighten them or you'll end up with a, a hump going across through there. And that's the last thing we need right in the throat of our mount is a big raised stitch. So I'm hoping we can get it to sit down level and also the hair still cover at least most of it anyway maybe we won't have to do too much patching looking rough right now see if we can make him pretty Guys, I'll be honest with y'all. I'm pretty happy with how this thing turned out. To be head sawed off and tore up ears and freezer burnt. I was able to hide most of that seam with these wrinkles. And then this is where his double throat patch was at on his original cape. So I'm gonna be able to airbrush that, kind of paint that in a little bit. That'll blend all of that right there. But that deer turned out pretty dang good. I'm happy with that. I am very, very pleased. Well, guys, I really appreciate y'all watching. If y'all haven't already, hit that subscribe button. If y'all like this video, make sure you give me a thumbs up and make sure to comment below uh, with any ideas of any other videos that, or, or any ideas of how uh, y'all might have worked on this deer right here any differently to give me some ideas and to teach me something new. I really appreciate y'all watching. Y'all come back. We'll see y'all next time.